Um, this notion of the museum as an elitist institution, a white box, a cold a sarcophagus, back to some of the original definitions, and the concept of the museum is a very recent one, um, of inviting the public to share something which has been plucked from elsewhere and uh, recontextualized. Um, brings me, though, to a few very valuable subjects and experiences which reaffirmed for me why I was in those worlds. When I was working at Japan Society as the curator in the 90s, we had a collection that had been given to the Rockefeller Collection and then Teja Study and eventually to Japan Society in 1930s. And this was a collection of Minge, which had been put together by Sasu Achito, who had refounded in 1924 the Minge movement in Japan. Now, the Minge movement shares, and why I'm bringing this up, a number of elements which we were we were brought up for discussion yesterday. The Minge movement was based on anonymous craftsmen, objects of very high quality, and functional value. So the aesthetic, the ontological, and this sense of a shared commonality. So this was an exhibition of this special collection. And one day my educational person was ill, so I took over the tour. And as museums, so much of our outreach, as we call it, involves student groups or groups visiting from all different institutions of all different ages. This was a group from an inner city school in Harlem of teenagers age 15. So I'm thinking, uh, my pre precondition mindset was that Japanese art is only open at that point, I'm speaking in the 90s, which has changed quite a bit in the intervening 15 years, to a certain group that appreciated even the high and low of Japanese art. So I was presuming that I would have to start even to begin to explain the geographical location of Japan, not, nevertheless to mention what Zen Buddhism is. So they arrived and um, both broken into groups of the boys and girls, completely separate. The girls first, the boys behind. Not even one or two side by side. And all the students were black. And they came in and I was taking them through the tour. You know, they were reading the text panels, reading the objects. The next thing I hear behind me is if a voice from afar, all the girls were talking about Buddhism. I, I thought I was hearing voices in another place. They all knew about Buddha. They knew the history about Buddha. They we got completely integrated into it. So I changed my entire tact and the, the talk and the tour took an entire different level. We came around to some more of the objects. There was a particular unusual object, which you don't see that often, from the province of Echizen, which is known for its quite rudimentary stoneware, but still very aesthetically pleasing, but not high-fired porcelain. This was a tooth blackening jar, which was used by the rural community villages in Echizen when a woman became married to blacken her tooth to obviously make her less attractive to the opposite sex. So all of the girls, of course, stopped in front of this and said to me, please explain this. I explained this to them, and the rupture of noise through this entire group spilled through almost like a snake serpentine formation. The girls all turned to the group of boys standing aside and proceeded to remark, do you see, even at that point in Japan, things were not any different.